In the 19th century, lynchings were so common that a lot of white people didn't even bat an eyelash at them. They were even sometimes a family event. People were lynched for being for the slave revolts, revolts, abolitionism, questioning questioning the law, lynch laws, disputes with white people, rape for on white women, and many other things. Some people don't even realize that there were a lot of anti-lynching campaigns. And one of the major people of these anti-lynching campaigns was Ida B. Wells, who wrote against white anarchy in the South and portrayed lynchings as a negative happening instead of a positive for the first time ever. Ida B. Wells was born in Holy Springs, Mississippi on July 16, 1862. She was the oldest child of eight children. She got her and she was the child of former slaves. She obtained her degree from Shaw University, and in 1878, her parents and several of her other siblings died from yellow fever. At the age of 16, Ida took responsibility for her remaining younger siblings. Raising these children taught her f vigor, which would also come, which would come in handy when she was involved in her anti-lynching campaign. At one point in time, Ida actually believed that lynch laws were good because they helped the Southern communities keep law and order and were good punishment for people who committed crimes that were violent and brutal. She believed kind of in an eye for an eye philosophy. However, things totally changed for Ida in 1892 when three of her closest friends were drug out into a field and shot to pieces because of a problem with a white owner, grocery owner. After this happened, Ida's philosophy completely changed. Along with them being killed, Memphis saw what would be terrible. Many black people gathered at the grocery store that had once belonged to one of the men who were hanged and shot to death. The sheriff of Holy Springs said, take a hundred men out, go out to the curb at once and shoot down any sight, shoot down on any sight any Negro who appears to be making trouble. Ida was a witness to this and it helped her in her pursuit against lynching. So Ida took to the newspapers. She advised many black people to leave Memphis and she even stated, there is therefore only one thing left that we can do, save our money and leave a town which will never protect our lives and property nor give us fair trial in the courts, but takes us out and murders us in cold blood when accused by whites. Wells and others financially supported many black people as they flocked out of Memphis. The white people soon had a response to her writing. There was a lot of manual labor and businesses that left town as a response to Ida's newspaper article. The predominant white people of the city even demanded that Ida stop her campaign against the city of Memphis and told her she needed to ask for the black people to return to their homes and jobs. However, Ida refused and continued writing. Then Ida left town for a convention in Philadelphia and while she was gone, many white people of Memphis destroyed the paper she worked for. This left Ida without a, home, without a job and they also threatened to have Ida lynched if she ever returned to Memphis. However, that didn't stop her. Ida accepted a job as a writer in New York City at the New York Age, and she took full advantage of having a new audience. She would host lectures in the north, Northeast about what was happening in the South. Many people often flocked to her lectures. She even became known worldwide. Upon hearing about Ida, England, Scotland, and Wales invited, invited Ida to come lecture there. So. In April and May of 1893, she went to England. She worked. She even worked with the Queen of England. After listening to her lectures, an anti-lynching committee was composed of some of the finest in Great Britain. So after those two months, she returned back home to the United States, and in 1895, she wrote her first book. 
one of the predominant quotes of the book is, the student of American sociology will find the year 1894 marked by a pronounced awakening of the public conscience to a system of anarchy and outlawry which had grown during a series of ten years to be so common the sense of unusual brutality fails to have any visual effect upon humane sentiments of the people of our land. So after writing her book, Ida decided to marry a man in Chicago, and she settled down to raise her family. However, while she was raising her family, she never truly heard her fight. While teaching Sunday school, she encouraged a group of young black men to form a group to right the wrongs of the white people. This group took it upon themselves to buy a building in Chicago and house black men without homes for 25 cents a night. Ida continued to write for Chicago newspapers and was even given her own column. On March 25, 1931, Ida died. The Chicago Defender, a newspaper, the newspaper she wrote for, wrote a tribute to honor stating that she was elegant and striking, always well-groomed, regal. In that statement, the newspaper alone, the newspaper showed Chicago just how important Ida was to the black community at that time. Ida was a very strong woman who can said to be the face of the lynching campaigns in the 19th century. She broke through barriers that not very many people had attempted to test in that time. She did not let anything get in her way, even as her own life was put in danger. She's a perfect example that you can get anything done if you set your mind to it. I'll leave you with one of her quotes.